Welcome back to Math for Game Developers, where we are learning about how to optimize our games because fast running games are not just important, they are crucial. And last week we learned about the memory hierarchy, where we learned about many of the different levels of memory that exist inside every computer. And today we are going to hyper focus on these four levels of memory because I think I've said this before but optimizing our programs is not just important it is crucial to what we do as programmers and as game developers so we're gonna look at a few things here we're gonna look at the total size we're going to look at the access cycles the amount of time and remember a cycle is just the amount of time a processor takes to do one thing we're going to look at the transfer size, which I'll explain in a moment. And we're going to look at the manager. In other words, if I want to influence where my data is stored, who do I talk to? So, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's take a look at the main memory. I just went on bestbuy.com and the newest computers sold have... Um, maybe about 30 or 60 gigabytes of memory loaded into them. And so that's plenty of memory uh, to run just about any game that we want to run. And it's about 100 cycles to access something in main memory if it's not in one of these higher caches. So here's the question though. When data is in main memory and we want to move it, up to the processor, how large of a chunk does the processor move? Does the computer move from main memory into the next level of cache, which is L2 or L3 cache? And the answer is that it moves one cache line worth of memory, which in most modern computers is going to be 64 bytes. So if you request any single byte from memory, the computer is going to move 64 bytes into the next level of cache. So let me draw that as a picture down here. Main memory is broken up into lines, each one being 64 bytes long. And when a higher level of memory requests some data, all 64 bytes are moved to the next level in a cache line transfer. Okay, so that's going to be important. We're going to we're going to examine that more later. But for now, who determines who is the manager of main memory? That's you. That's the programmer. When you write your program, you are writing what happens in main memory. When you say new, that means give me a little bit more of main memory to work with. When you say malloc, same thing. When you load a file from the hard drive, you're loading it into main memory. So the programmer is more or less in control of what happens in main memory. Let's took, take a look at L2 or L3. I have right here, I asked my computer to tell me how much it has in my L2 cache. And it told me 2048, which this is in kilobytes. So I have two megabytes worth of, of L2 cache. And you see my computer has no L3 cache, but my computer's a little bit old. Um, most computers these days have an L3 cache as well. It's gonna be a little bit larger. So we're, we're looking at a few megabytes. I have two megabytes uh, in my computer of L2 cache. And to access L2 or L3 cache is gonna be about 30 cycles, it's much faster. And who controls it? This is the processor or the, the computer itself. The processor sees that some data is needed from main memory and it moves that data into the next level of cache, which I'm drawing here also split up into lines of 64 bytes, 64, 64, and so on. 
So it moves that cache line right here where it's needed into the L2 cache. Uh, let's move right along here with a pretty pink color and we're gonna look at the L1 cache which is in the order of a few kilobytes maybe 200 kilobytes or so it's very fast to access you can do it in a single cycle uh, and it again data gets transferred into our L1 cache in the same cache line size of 64 bytes Okay, who handles this? Again, the processor. And another quick image right here. More lines of 64 bytes, but much smaller and faster, our data gets loaded into another cache line of 64 bytes in the L1 cache. And finally, we get to where we want our data to be in the, in the, in the registers of the processor which I will draw in bright yellow because they're so important. A modern 64-bit Intel processor, which is most likely what you're going to be programming on, is going to have 16 registers, and each register is 8 bytes. And so in, title, in total, that is 128 bytes of memory in the processor at any given time. That's nothing. That's very little. Of course, it takes no time to access it, no time at all, but still, that is that is very small amount of memory. So you can see why important it is because you have to get entire megabytes and gigabytes of data through this thing. And so managing these cache levels is very important. So you have these individual 8-byte registers. And it's very quick to pull data from L1 into one of these um, because L1 typically sits right on the processor chip inside the chip with the processor. And so it's very fast to pull data from L1 cache to the register. And we do so in chunks of about 8 bytes. Not about 8 bytes, but exactly 8 bytes. So who manages this? This is actually the compiler's job. Your compiler determines um, what parts of your program are stored in registers versus what parts are stored in memory and, and, and never put into registers directly. Uh, it's possible that some things may, may skip the registers completely and go straight to being processed without being stored in a register. And that's a little bit slower. So it's important to understand how compilers do things. I'm not going to get into that because it's not maybe one day, but it's, for the time being it's not terribly mathy. And I like to cover mathy stuff. But if you want a good book that explains um, how the processor decides which things to put in registers and how to look at disassembled uh, bytecode and tell what the processor is doing and which thing is stored in memory, I have a good book that I can recommend you, uh, which I will post in the description. So let me ask the question now, what happens if the program wants something to be in a register, but it doesn't exist in the L1 cache? That is called a cache miss. And cache misses are bad, because if it doesn't exist in the register, we have to spend that one cycle of time to get it from the L1 cache. What if it's not in the L1 cache? Well, then we have to spend 30 cycles of time because we had an L1 cache miss to get it from the L2 or L3 caches. And then if it's not in those caches, we again have to spend this 100 cycles worth of time to get it to main memory, from main memory. And then if it's for some reason been paged out to the hard drive because of virtual memory, which I'm not going to go into, that can be another miss and that will be something like a hundred thousand cycles and so that's very very bad so we can um, make the the very long story short here is that one of the best ways to make your program run faster is to do the best you can to help the processor and the compiler move the memory that you're about to need 
into the highest cash level possible. And now let's go to a quick demonstration before the end of this video.